Hello everybody and welcome to another video here on Philly Sports Network where time to check the calendars guys because I think it's Sunday fun day! Today's Sunday fun day. What is more fun than looking into a crystal ball of Eagles bowl predictions? We're not going to spoil the season just yet though. I don't want to use my Mystic Meg tactics for that too soon. We'll save that for a rainy day. Today we're talking training camp of course which kicked off down at the Novacare Complex this week. So I'm going to be taking a look at my five bowl predictions for training camp. Some of the winners, some of the losers and some interesting picks along the way. To get into it though guys if you're not already subscribed I can check pro YouTube focus and see that over 50% of you watching this still haven't hit that big red button and I might cry about it so if you could hit that subscribe button you enjoy the content that would be fantastic let's see if we can get this video to 250 likes if we can do that we'll give away a Philly Sports Network t-shirt and as always don't forget your daily dose of Philadelphia sports coverage can be found at phillysportsnetwork.com all right so my first look into the crystal ball and I'm seeing Jannard Avery being the man to win the edge full roll. The Eagles defensive end depth chart right now is lacking, to say the least. Beyond Brandon Graham and Derek Barnett, there are no long-term options whatsoever. You've got Sharif Miller, who again guaranteed us 10 sacks this season after playing in a whopping two special team snaps last year. So let's see if you get 10 snaps on the field before 10 sacks. That would be a start. Josh Sweat took a really big step forward in 2019. I cannot wait to see what he can do. So he's automatically the third guy. But there is no fourth. Vinny Curry is gone. And I don't think the Eagles are in a position to field someone like Casey Tuhill. And Deshaun Hall is obviously now on the injured reserve list. So there's no depth there. Joe Osman is a wild card, but all of those options have question marks. And the one man, in my opinion, who is the most solid bet is also a player that everyone forgot about. The team traded a 2021 fourth round pick for him at the deadline last year. He came in, had a fantastic debut, and then... I don't know, he, he sort of disappeared. But as a rookie, at 6 foot 1, 225 pounds, the man had 4.5 sacks. With 40 tackles for a 6th round pick, I mean, pretty good. Then the Browns decided to change system and went from a 4-3 to like a 4-2-5. And that left Avery in this weird limbo. So the Eagles snuck him away at the deadline and were never really able to get him up to speed outside of that debut. So I think that if they can get him either in a stand-up defensive end role or a rotational one, there's some real potential there. The thing working against him is I do think Malik Jackson will be someone to fill in for that edge four or that edge three, depending on however they want to rotate this around. But Jackson at defensive tackle is great, but he can play the five tech as well. He did a lot of damage there at Jacksonville. I think he can come out and be a real force off the edge. The Eagles are going to run uh, a NASCAR package of defensive tackles, which I'm going to call the Motor Trend Truck of the Year package. Why not add Gennard Avery to that list as the fourth guy? Like, Why not add a little bit of speed off the edge, a little bit of burst off of that edge? I think Gennard Avery could be in for a big season. I absolutely think he makes the roster, and I think he'll do it over Sharif Miller. I think he'll do it over Joe Osman. For me, if you're just going off depth chart alone, I think Gennard Avery is your DE4 come the start of the year. Next up on my crystal ball, and oh, I'm, 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 I'm getting the name. I'm getting the name John. I'm hearing the name... John. Is there a John in the audience? That's right, and the John I'm talking about is, of course, my draft crush, John Hightower. Lads, listen, we all remember how excited I got in the NFL draft watch along and the Eagles drafted Hightower. If you don't, brace yourselves. John Hightower. Thank you. <laughs> absolute steal. If you go back and watch my wide receiver grades video before the draft, he was the real outlier in terms of a value pick and the Eagles squeeze every last drop. Now what could I possibly be predicting for training camp for John Hightower? I think he's the starting slot receiver. I really, really do. Now, realistically, I think he's got either WR1 or 2 potential. He is more of an outside receiver. 
but he was very good from soft alignments or working from the slot at Boise State last year. And I know he's got a great release and he's got an electric first step. The toughest thing he'll find in the NFL is playing against those NFL DBs. And if they're impressed, they're not going to give him the room or the leverage that he would normally gain working against DBs while at Boise State. So, And the other thing is if you take Marquis Goodwin out of this, okay, and that's speed away, everyone's looking to Kez Watkins as a 4.35 40-yard dash. Oh my God, it's sensational. He's a slot guy. I don't see it. I turned on the tape, I broke down the film, and look, I think he is the rawest receiver on this Eagles roster. And that's not a bad thing. With Aaron Moorhead in town, he's absolutely going to get the most out of him. But I don't think he's the most ready for a slot role. I think John Hightower is on game tape quicker. He may not be quicker with a 4.440 yard dash time that was unofficial, but on game speed. And someone that goes 0 to 100 during a route can carry speed through the route, is great change in direction, is twitching and more importantly, aggressive in the air, I think John Hightower is everything the Eagles need from a slot receiver. Now, the main question here then is, will he beat out Greg Ward Jr.? And it would be tight. I think there's natural chemistry with Greg Ward Jr. He knows the playbook. He's been there longer. It's got to be close, but we're going bold. I'm saying John Hightower is your WR3 come week one. As someone that has played outside, inside, quarterback, running back at Boise State, he's done it all. I think he can hit the ground running here. All right, number three, number three, and it is, uh, oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, this is going to stink. I don't think Jason Peters is going to be the starting right guard in week one. I really don't see it. Um, I think Matt Pryor will be the starting right guard because by the time training camp rolls around, when there's no preseason, there's no OTAs, and you've got a 38-year-old man who has played his entire career at left tackle, moving to guard is one thing, doing it where every body movement you've done for the last 18 centuries is now mirrored is very difficult. And I think... I think Matt Pryor has proved enough. He went to the OL Masterminds group with Lane Johnson this year. And you go back and watch the tape, he wasn't bad. He really wasn't bad when filling in for Brandon Brooks. And the only way the Eagles are going to keep this offensive line conveyor belt going, like they did with Vitae, like they have with Sayamalo, is by giving these players time. Pryor was a late round draft pick, also out of TCU, who played at every spot on the offensive line there. He now comes into the Eagles as a swing tackle, then ends up playing guard. Does really well, I think, in those opening couple of games that we saw. I did the film room on him. There's a lot to like. I don't see how he loses out to Jason Peters, who has never played the position. The only way he does so is if it's political. Now, I think Peters was brought in... There's essentially an Andre Dillard insurance policy. Like, what is the worst case that happens here if Jason Peters isn't your starting right guard? Oh no, we've accidentally got a Hall of Fame left tackle and he costs barely anything. Ah! It's a way of getting him in the building without impacting the confidence of Dillard. So I don't think Peters is your starting right guard. Your starting right guard in week one will be Matt Pryor. All right, number four. Scores on the door. This one, it's, it's not that great, unfortunately. It's not that bold. I've been hammering the nail all off-season. Nate Sudfeld will not make this roster. Carl Letter will beat him out. He will be your QB2. And Jalen Hurts will eventually take it over. I don't think Hurts will be fundamentally ready just yet this offseason. Again, no rookie minicamp, no OTAs, no preseason, limited training camp reps. You want someone that's been there and done it. Laletta's got experience under his belt. More experience than Sudfeld at this point. He's an improvement over what Kessler was. Sudfeld struggled last preseason before the injury. He struggled in training camp. I'm amazed he came back. I think Laletta, having spent some time with this team now, beats out Nate Sudfeld. And because Jalen Hurts is inexperienced, I think that Hurts will be that wildcard QB for his opening stint of his career until he gets up to speed properly. So that's not a bad thing. It's not a knock on Jalen Hurts. We all know he was drafted to be the backup. It works out better for Carson Wentz if you put Lauletta QB2, keep Hurts a bit further away, keep that kind of competition down. That would be the way I approach it. I think Lauletta's QB2. And finally, while talking of the number two, I think Avante Maddox will be CB2. I really do. Don't get me wrong, I like Sidney Jones, his production comes in bunches, but then the rest of it is so scattered around, there have been questions over his mental toughness, and the biggest thing of all, it's his contract year. So, in a grand scenario, okay, Sidney Jones has an electric end to 2019, balls out in 2020, and now the Eagles go, 
bollocks. We've, we've, we've got to pay him or let him go. What do we? What, what if Sidney Jones has an amazing 2020? What the Eagles need so desperately right now is cap leverage. And the man they'll get that from is Avante Maddox, who is contracted beyond Sidney Jones' final year. And that's going to be huge dividends for the team when it comes to building that sustainability. In the same way LeBlanc is contracted after Roby Coleman will go next year. And he will take over that starting slot role. Aye, aye, captain. Genuinely, it's a big jump for Maddox to take. I mean, he's been a nickel corner all his career at Pitt. Then was asked to play safety as a rookie, which he'd never done. Then got moved outside last year and had an odd game against the Packers. But he showed some production and he's definitely got the speed to go with those faster wide receivers. And when you look at the skill set that Slay has, what he lacks is that tackling fundamental. And I feel that if Avante Maddox can slow himself down and angle his body better, then there's going to be a very, very good cornerback there. My only knock on him was when changing direction, he moves so fast that coming to a stop is like really difficult when he often oversets or slips over or misses. If he can eradicate that, CB2 is his. What do you think, guys? Give me your training camp bowl predictions. Don't hide anything. Don't hold back. Tell me how bad mine are. Tell me how good yours are. I want to hear all the smoke down in the... Whoa. Whoa, not now. Ah. 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 Let me know down in the comments, guys. From myself, Liam Jenkins. Enjoy the start of next week. We'll see you soon.